If a dog dies, the dog is dead. If a cat dies, the cat is dead. If a man dies, the man is dead. If a woman dies, the woman is dead. And there's a death angel. Death. There's a death angel that is sent to gather the dead. Jesus says, I hold the keys to death. Jesus holds the keys to death and hell, and he will not allow even a sparrow to fall from the sky. The death angel cannot touch the sparrow. Death cannot visit the bird without God knowing it, without God's permission. Church, I've preached this. A lot of people disagree with me, but that's all right. I preach a lot of stuff people disagree with. But I've always said... That Jesus holds the keys to my life. Jesus holds the keys to my soul. Jesus holds the keys to to death this morning. And the death angel can't touch me until God is through with me. The death angel cannot come after me until God is through with me. And when God allows the death angel to come, he's finished with me. He wants me to where I can be with him. And until then, praise God, if 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 the devil had control over death, he would wipe out every Christian on earth. He would wipe out every preacher on earth. He would shut us all up. And our government right now is trying to do that to the best of their ability. But I've got news for all of them in Washington, all of them around the world that Jesus Christ is the answer. He's still almighty and all powerful. And God Jehovah is still on the throne. And every person, I don't care if they're politicians, lawyers, doctors, anybody, all of us have got to stand before God. They can pass every law that they can pass in Washington. From the White House all the way to the Capitol, they can pass everything they want to here in Raleigh. But there's one thing they can't do. They can't stop God. They may stop man, and they may stop church, and they may stop a lot of things. They can stop television. They can stop radio, and they can put take the commandments off the walls, but they can't stop God. And one day when they stand before Jesus, uh, their knees are going to bow, and their tongues are going to, come, going to confess uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, and that's right before He cast them into the lake of fire. Because they will be judged. You're going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. But God's an on time God. The disciples were in the boat. And the storms came. Why? Because the devil didn't want them to get to the other side. Had they gotten to the other side, the devil knew that somebody was going to be healed. The devil knew that if Jesus Christ made it to the other side, that that one that was possessed by the demons over there, the devils over there, was going to be set free. He had a good thing going on the other side of the sea. He didn't want Jesus Christ to mess it up. And I'm telling you right now, the devil's got a good thing going in some of our households right here. The devil's got a good thing going right here in North Carolina. Carolina. He's got a good thing going in Raleigh. He's got a good thing going in the Capitol. He's got a good thing going in the White House. And he doesn't want anybody messing it up. But I've got news for everybody. And I've got news for the devil that Jesus Christ is sending out the Word of God. The God Almighty Jehovah that I serve. And the Holy Ghost is going to let the Word of God go forward. And that Word is going to cut sharper than a two-edged sword. It's going to bring them down. It's going to cut them asunder. Why? Because it's the anointing of all Almighty God. And when that anointing hits, uh, you're going to see people repent uh, and they can do everything they want to to try to stop us. Uh, but I'm telling you that God's word shall not return void uh, if we're preaching the true gospel, if we're standing on the word of God and telling everybody that sin is sin. And I'm telling each and every one of you, you play games with God and you're going to be cut asunder. God's going to bring you down. You cannot live in sin and expect God's blessings upon you. It'll happen for a season. But at the end of the season, you're going to come weeping and crying, moaning and groaning. You'll be back at the altar. You're going to make an altar somewhere, sinners. Listen to me. Even you Christians that are born again, you know that it's not right. You don't like me preaching about it, but you know it's not right. You know you don't like. Yeah, you say, well, why does he always have to harp on that? Because sin is sin, and if it rubs you wrong, it's because God loves you. And God wants you to know that you need to come out from it. He didn't save you to live in sin. He saved you to be a peculiar people. He saved you to be a separate people. He he saved you to sanctify you, to separate you from the cares of the world. The disciples were on the ship, and the ship was about to go down. And Jesus spoke, peace be still. He said, where's your faith? Why do you doubt? He showed up on time. 
just as the boat was full of water. And you know, after a boat gets full of water, usually it starts going down. And he didn't let it, he didn't wake up, he didn't start anything when it was half full. He didn't start anything when it was three quarter full. He let it fill up. The disciples walking around in the water. Jesus, Jesus. You see, they waited until. They didn't start when the first wave come over. And that's the way some of us are. We, 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 the way, we're we getting a little wet, that's all right. Now, Stormy, I want to see you type all of that. <laughs> she was talking today about my, all of my stuttering and stuff, how she has to type it. Uh, we do closed caption, and she has to type every word I speak. And don't you think that's a job? But anyway, the disciples didn't wait when the first wave came. They waited until the last. When they saw it, they, they couldn't fix it themselves. Have any of us ever been there? We've all been there. But just when they saw they couldn't fix it themselves, Jesus, and he showed up, and he spoke, peace be still. And church, that's the same way he is tonight, right now, this moment. When you get to where you can't fix it, you call upon the name of the Lord, and he'll fix it for you. Paul and Silas, God was on time in prison that night in jail. Paul and Silas, bound in chains, bound in fetters, in jail, called upon the name of the Lord. He showed up just in time to deliver them. And many of you joining by television right now, this is going to be the conclusion right now. But you in here, we're going to get started in a minute. But anyway, you may be standing or sitting in front of that television set. And you're bound by sin. And you know you're not living the right life that's pleasing to God. I'm going to say this prayer. And if God's dealing with your heart, say it with me. Father God, I come before you today. I am a sinner. I have sin in my life, Lord. And I'm asking forgiveness of that sin. I ask you to place it under the blood of Jesus. And Lord, come into my heart right now. Be my Savior. Be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise. Until the day of redemption. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart. If God was dealing with you, he just forgave you. He just saved your soul. There's a toll-free number on the screen. I want you to call the number. Let us know so that we can pray and rejoice with you. We've got some free literature to send you. Pray for us always. Support us whenever you can. And remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. He is the answer, the answer around the world.